Hi, and welcome to another broadcast of Fresh Manor, an outreach of Rock of Truth Ministries. I'm pa Apostle Lance Bellany alongside uh, my son in the gospel, Pastor Milton Lewis. And we've been talking to you, and we want to bring the second part of a series that we've been teaching and sharing with you on from the thought that the Bible did not create God. And last week, uh, we came to you uh, from Chicago, uh, and we were just talking about the idea that many believers are under this concept and this notion that the Bible has a patent on who God is. Amen. And the, the, we, we, we act as though the Bible created God. We act as though the, the, you know, somehow God is a result of what is written in the Bible. Amen. That is just patently not true. That is not the way it is. That is not the case. And, and, and thank God for the Holy Spirit that quickening me and, and just, just uh, allowing me, mm -hmm. Pastor, just Amen. to see, uh, and I dare say even us, to see this un and, and receive this understanding that God was not created by the Bible. Uh, rather, he is the author of the things that are written in the Bible. He himself is greater than the Bible. So why should we limit our understanding and our interpret our understanding of him by our interpretation of the Bible? Amen. You know, you know, Apostle, we've always uh, said in, 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 in one of the popular uh, teachings in the in the body of Christ now is that. You know, we don't want to put God in a box. Yes. Okay. Very good point. But that's exactly what we've done uh, with what we've done with God concerning the Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because what we believe as believers is that God hadn't said anything outside of what is contained in the Bible. Okay. Okay. But the scriptures tell us it tell tells us that. If everything that Jesus did was written, was written, amen, mm -hmm. in, 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 in books, then we wouldn't have enough of them. Actually, the scripture says that. It says exactly that. That if all the things that Jesus had done were written in a book, I perceive that even the books of the world couldn't contain them. Couldn't contain them. Okay? And so what we have to be careful is, is that the Holy Spirit speaks, and, I, and I'm going to say this. Go ahead. The Holy Spirit speaks outside of the scripture yes yes now yes that, and that, that that's a fact and an irrefutable fact that the holy spirit has the authority to say what jesus said and what jesus is saying mm -hmm. key Absolutely. point not just what he said mm -hmm. but what he is delivering now and, and i and, and I, I don't mean to cut you off apostle but i think here the key is, is the Holy Spirit. What we've done to the Holy Spirit in the body of Christ today is that we put him on the back shelf. We've made the Bible first and foremost mm -hmm. in our communication with God. Mm -hmm. Okay? But that's just not the case. It is the Holy Spirit. He's the one who God ordained to lead and to guide us into all truth. Pastor, that is a profound statement, as well as it is a script, scriptural Absolutely. statement, that the Holy Spirit was given to us to lead and guide us into all truth. Our first line, or our first recourse, when we want to understand the nature and the person of God, his plan and will and purpose for our lives, are not scripture. The scripture stands in a corroboration of what we are hearing from the Holy Amen. Ghost. The Amen. first recourse Amen. is to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, not what the Scriptures are saying to the church. That's right. The Scriptures only corroborate what we are receiving from the Holy Ghost. If you, beloved, are not pursuing the Holy Ghost to understand the plan and purpose and will of God for your life, you are missing the very essence of what God wants you to have. Absolutely. And if the Holy Spirit has been given to me 
and to lead me and guide me into all truth, then that's who I have to depend on and that's who I have to lean on to lead me into that truth. Yes. Amen. What happens, Apostle, when God says to me or God speaks something or God wants to do something that's not necessarily in the scriptures? Uh-oh. Now you have a problem. Uh -oh. because, because when I cannot, when I limit who God is, when I limit who Yahweh is only to what is written, then I, by default, limit him and put him in a box. Well, and you know, some people may say, well, you know, God will never do anything like that. But wait a minute. Let's take inventory. Yes. Where did the Apostle Paul get grace from? Yes. He didn't get it from the New Testament. I promise you that. He didn't get it from the Old Covenant either. Okay. Not, not, not directly. Not, like, not the way he delivered it to us. That's the, that's the point to be made. Grace was the new thing. Yes. That God was ready to drop into the earth and deliver to the believers. Yes. Okay. Now, before you move on, <clears throat> before you move on, dealing with this issue of grace and being at that moment outside of the written scripture. Uh, okay. At the time Paul was delivering grace, it was outside of the written scripture in a sense of what people understood the scriptures to mean. That's right. And to be. That's because correct. Because they were still under the understanding and mindset and precepts of the Mosaic law. That's right. Okay. And now grace enters the picture on the wings of the message of the apostle Paul right. and the Peter and, and, and grace and truth coming by Jesus Christ. But it was really proliferated are really proliferated and, 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 and expounded upon by the Apostle Paul, that message had to step outside Absolutely. of the current understanding and boundaries that had been placed around God That's at right. that moment in time. Think about this. Mm -hmm. If the Apostle Paul or someone, if, if he had delivered that word today, we would label him as a heretic. Yes. Okay? Pure and simple. So, in essence, a man today that we would label as a heretic, we believe, the, the majority of what we believe was based on his gospel. Yes. So think about that. Just, just think about that for one second. The point is, is that the God that I know, my father, mm -hmm. is much, much more than this book. Absolutely. Hands down, and I believe without that, a doubt. I believe that God is now in position and God is ready to show himself outside of the book. And then let me let me take it a step further, since I since I can by <laughs> apostolic authority. Let me take it a step further. Not only he is ready to, he has already done so. And there are many of you that are listening to this and will be listening to this, and this is identifying with what the Holy Spirit is already doing in your heart. You know that there is a move afoot. You know that there is a work that the Holy Spirit is doing and you've been hearing the whispers yes. of the Holy Spirit, that yes. still small voice saying to you, there is something beyond this. There is more that I want to say. That is more that I want to do. That I'm being shackled and stifled by your understanding of scripture. Not what I want to do. Not what our Father in Heaven wants me to show you that He's doing. Amen. Okay? Amen. I believe that the, that the kingdom has shifted. Yes. Now it's up to the body of Christ to catch up with what the kingdom, with what the Holy Spirit is doing in the kingdom. Absolutely. I believe the kingdom has shifted. And I believe God is ready to, uh, not ready to, but God has now uh, began to release that dispensation amongst us. Yes. Yes. And beloved, this is where... Uh, the, 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 it really gets interesting to the end that that dispensation having been released among us, we are now accountable for that dispensation, whether you get on board or not. Mm -hmm. Think about this. The saints at the, at the introduction of grace became accountable for grace, Absolutely. whether they got on board or not. Absolutely. This dispensational shift and move of the kingdom the gospel of inheritance, the gospel of the kingdom, whether you are on board or not, is irrelevant That's right. as to whether or not it is released in the earth. The releasing in the earth is our father's business. It's our job to get on board. That's right. Okay? Amen. All right? So I want to say this, Pastor, as we, as we, as we carry on. I want to say this. We start with the premise that the Bible did not create God. I want to I try this on for size. Mm -hmm. 
There are 66 books that we know that were authored by men of God as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's we right. understand that. We understand that. Of those 66 books, multiple of them were written by one man. One man. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there are in actuality less than 66 men mm -hmm. that authored books that we call books in our Holy Writ. That's right. Now, I want you to try this on for size, beloved. So you're telling me, and you're about to, to argue and debate with me this idea that 60, less than 66 men over the pantheon and the eons of time were able to encompass all that God is and all that God will ever be and all that God ever wanted us to have, they were able to encompass him in our Holy Scripture. And I'm here to tell you today that could not be further from the truth. What they gave us was what was given to them at the time it was given to them. Nothing more, nothing less. And I'm not suggesting that what they gave us is not relevant for what, what it did for us. I'm not suggesting that at all. But what I am suggesting and what I'm saying emphatically is that they didn't have all of who God is. And all that God wants to give to us. And neither did they have all that God wants to give us. And now in this time, in this day, he's raising up men of apostolic and women of apostolic authority. Yes, I said women. Men and women of apostolic authority to be able to declare what he has to say for this generation. Amen. Okay? Think about that for a second. Mm -hmm. 60, less than 66 men we have relegated their interpretation, no, I don't want to say interpretation, their uh, receiving from, from the Holy Spirit or from God himself, and now we have limited our understanding of God to what they had to say rather than letting God define himself That's right. unto us. Amen? Well, listen, uh, 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 turn a pastor in your, in your Bibles. I want to share a passage of Scripture uh, coming from, from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And we're going to start there at verse uh, number 9. Let's start at verse 9. Okay. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. We can stop right there. <laughs> we can stop right there. Think about what I just read to you. It hasn't entered into the hearts. It hasn't been seen by men, the things that God has prepared for them. But what if God gets ready to say it now? This was written, this was written thousands of years ago by uh, Apostle Paul at the time being moved by the Holy Ghost to say something that is relevant to the fact that God has not revealed all of his person to us. That's right. But now in this time is ready to reveal more of himself. There is no way that this earth itself could could could, could encompass That's all right. that God is yeah. because he's the creator. If if by some chance the the, the creation could embody all that yeah. the creator is, then the creation could stand and 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 decry the fact that I'm just as great as you That's are. That's right. That's right. And I think one of the major problems that we face in the body of Christ, Apostle, and it's simply this, is that we believe that God isn't speaking anymore. Okay. And now that's a, that's a real issue. Now we just that's believe that God, we, we believe that all God had to say and that all God is ever going to say is right here. Yes. And I, and I'm, I can't, and neither will I walk with that. Yes. Uh, and and un uh, uh, fortunately, I'm about to say unfortunate, <laughs> but fortunately for us, that isn't the case because now we can stand in great expectation, not that he would interpret what he's already said, That's right. but in addition to interpreting what he's already said, he can now go on and establish more of what he wants to say. That's right. The question is, can we receive it? That's the question. That's the question. And Pastor. at the outset, we talked about putting God in the box, yes. remember? Yes. Now, God is ready to free himself from this box yes. that we've created for him. Yes. And so now the question is, is that can we live with what God wants to do now? 
Can we let him speak outside of the box? And are we willing to live outside of the box based on what we are hearing him say? Remember, beloved, let him that have an ear, let him hear. Let him hear. Okay. I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm asking you to believe what the Holy Spirit is speaking. Because if you are hearing what the Holy Ghost is hearing, you're going to hear a lot of what I'm saying. Amen. It's just that simple. Listen to what it says on here in verse in verse uh, number 10. Uh, let's finish up at verse 9, though. It says that, but uh, the things that which God hath prepared for them that love him. Okay? All right? But God hath revealed them unto us by his what? Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. All things. So if you, if you subscribe to the idea yeah. that the Bible is all-encompassing of God, then you have got to subscribe to the idea that the Spirit has already spoken all things. That's oh, right. Oh, and that's uh, where the problem becomes for many of us. That's right. And back to your point. He's not speaking anymore because he's already said all well, that there is. Said. So again, I fall back to this, to this idea. So, so 2,000 years ago, actually over 2,000 years ago, some 6,000 years ago, you're telling me God started speaking and within 4,000 years, he spoke all that he was ever going to say to humanity. Everything that impacted the kingdom was said 2,000 years. Uh, 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 ended two thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. That's that's what that's, that's what, what the argument is. That's what the argument is. Okay. Well, well, the issue with that too, Apostle, is this: is that what not many people subscribe to? I get on board with is that the kingdom has changed. Okay. The kingdom has changed. Explain that. Okay. Well, we talk about the the, the men who, who who heard from the Holy Spirit. Uh, that wrote the letters or the, or the books mm -hmm. that we call or that we live by today, right. which is our Bible. But think about this, just, 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 just in natural terms, mm -hmm. you know, because life has changed for us, mm -hmm. okay? okay? The way we live has changed for us. How do we dare not think that the, the spirit of the kingdom or the kingdom has not changed for us. Right. The men who wrote these books, they didn't know what a computer was. Neither a cell phone. They didn't know what a cell phone was. So we'd be foolish to think, to, to think that our natural lives and the way, to, because again, this is God, we're God's creation and God's creation has changed. How, how do, how, let me say it like this. Why would we believe that God's kingdom wouldn't change as well? Let me play the advocate for the other side okay. for just a moment. Some would say, well, this is a living word. Mm -hmm. So it has the ability to adapt with the times that it has, uh, that, that it finds itself in. Okay. Well, that, that may very well, well, well be. Let me, let, let me interject a little bit. Well, if that was the case, then the law should have adapted and we don't need grace. For that, for that argument, for, for that argument, in, okay. in essence, in essence, to your point, <laughs> and that's a very good point. Well, the, the law should have adapted. The law should have adapted because it is still a part of that living word that we attribute to. But but we don't apostle. We don't look at it like that. No, we don't. No, we do, don't. Do, do, do we really? We are duplicitous in the way we approach the Bible. Absolutely. Okay, but go we, ahead. we approach it with two faces. Yeah, we, we do. do. Do you realize that God changed His mind? Yeah, He did. Do we realize that God changed His mind? <laughs> uh, we, we, and 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 he ha and it's his prerogative. That's, you said something. You said something to me, and I want you to repeat it for the audience. <laughs> <laughs> kind of comes from your generation. <laughs> uh, uh, you, you you said I am God, and I run this thing. How did you say you that? Know, you know, God had been dealing with me concerning some things, and you know, God always has a way to get us to that next level. Yes. And and through it all, when I came through the fire and I came through and all the smoke was settled, he said, son, I want you to understand something. I run this thing, mm -hmm. you know, from my generation. Yeah. You know, I, I, I run this thing. In other words, that I don't want you to get it twisted. I don't want you to misunderstand yeah. that this is my show. I'm God. I'm God. This is my show. And I run this thing. And I run this thing. And and and, and <laughs> beloved, that that is just the way it is. And it and as a result, and and as a part of him, uh, as Pastor Lewis said, running this thing, it's his prerogative 
to change his mind and do it any way he chooses to do it. But why do we have such a problem when God changes his mind? Or when God is ready to do something different? Or when God is ready to expand on something he's already done? Why does this generation have, have a, problem such a problem with that? that? I know why. Because we're not hearing from the Holy Spirit. Period. That's why. Because we all, everybody that is listening to, no, not, maybe not everybody, but most every born again believer that's listening to this message, right? Or this, this presentation right here. You will attest. You will hear what the Holy Spirit, you want to hear, you love to hear, you desire to hear what That's the right. Holy Spirit is saying. The problem is not that you desire to or want to. The problem is you being limited in what you can receive from him. You've limited yourself to what you can receive from the Holy Ghost right. only to your interpretation of what has already been said. That's where you draw the limit. I can only go with you as far as I understand the Bible. And I'm here to tell you that Moses looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. He had no idea where he was going. He had no understanding of what he was going to, what he was going to get when he got there. He just moved based on what God was telling him. And I'm telling you right now, we're at a time and a dispensation and a moment that we must be led by the Holy Ghost. Forget about where no he's question. taking us. Forget about what we're going to get when we get there. No Forget question. about all of the rest of that. I'm pursuing him. I was, I was, I was, uh, as we get ready to close, we, we're kind of long in this session. But I was meditating in the word the other day. And uh, when I say the word, I'm meditating in what I'm hearing from the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most people, most people understand me to be meditating in the Bible. I'm meditating in the things that I'm hearing from the Holy Ghost. And I begin to think about, Pastor, I begin to think about the like, a, 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 a likeness, if you will, of, of, of this journey that the Holy Spirit has me on. And this is what he told me. He said, son, he said, I am the propulsion. He said, the word that I've already spoken is the rudder. Mm -hmm. And I began to say, okay, Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you. I don't quite understand. He said, you don't move with a rudder. Right. You only steer, steer. <laughs> with the rudder. Amen. He said, you move through propulsion. propulsion. The wind fills the sail. That's what gives the boat motion. But just because the, 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 the sail is full of wind doesn't mean I'm going in the right, right direction. Right. Amen. Now I can judge whether or not I'm going in the right direction and alter that direction by the rudder. By the rudder. So if I want to go right, I steer my rudder to the right. If I want to go left, I steer the rudder to the left. Doesn't change the propulsion. Mm -hmm. The propulsion just moves me. Moves me. That's right. The rudder steers and guides me. All right. And salvation is the boat that I'm traveling, I'm traveling in. in. All right. Now think about this for a second. The relevance to what the Holy Spirit is doing and the direction that the Holy Spirit is taking us is, de is determined by the things he's already said. That's right. OK, that's right. We can't violate what he's already right. said in yeah. pursuit of what he's saying. That's right. So he said the rudder of where of how to get where I'm moving you will be determined by what I've, already, what I've said. already said, but what I've already said can't be an anchor or a, 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 an anchor. Right. It has to be a rudder. Mm -hmm. And we've allowed what God has already said through the Holy Spirit to be an anchor for us or an and obstacle. that are an obstacle. So so we can't go beyond this. That's right. And Apostle, let me say this too. just one more point to concerning uh, Abraham. And when, when God told him to leave his father's house mm -hmm. and go into that city, he said, uh, uh, well, I'm the builder and maker. Mm -hmm. Imagine the faith, because faith also plays a oh, great huge part, part in this. this too. You just have to believe and believe what you hear in the Holy Spirit say, and you have to go out and pursue that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, Simple as now, that. Now Abraham could have came up with all kinds of excuses, like, all kinds like of excuses. we do today, concerning why we won't move uh, 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 and do what God has told us to do. But the most important part of that was that he was in a position to hear from God. Yes. And that more than anything, I think, plagues the body of Christ. Being in a position to Being hear. Being in a position to hear the Holy Spirit. See, I can go and read this all day. I can read this all day. 
But he that has an ear, let him hear not what the scripture is saying, but what the Holy Spirit is, is saying. saying to the church. That's right. And, and, and beloved, I have learned, and, and, and again, I know we're a little bit long, but, but allow me to say this and, and we'll bring it to a close. This session, we'll be back with another session uh, uh, next week. But I have learned after 35 years of salvation to understand that the most important aspect of my walk in Christ and my walk in salvation is not how much I know the scripture, mm. although I know him quite well. Mm. It's not how much I can articulate the scripture. The most important aspect Amen. of my walk in salvation is how well do I hear yes. and receive and obey what I'm uh, from the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, beloved, thank you so much for taking these last 20 minutes or so to be with us as we share with you uh, from the idea and from the thought that the Bible didn't create God. And I want to make it very clear. I am in no way uh, impugning the authority and the uh, legitimacy Absolutely. of our written scripture. Absolutely. I'm simply not allowing it to act as an anchor, but rather as a rudder to guide me as opposed to hindering me in what the Holy Spirit is saying to Amen. the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, listen, beloved, remember, ye shall know the truth, yes. and it is the truth that shall make you free. Thank you for joining us on this broadcast of Fresh Manor. Join us next time. God bless. Thank you.